Good morning and welcome to Catherine's cooking channel this morning. But she's at my house today and we, she has been fishing up a storm. So I know if y'all are watching her videos, you know how much she's fishing and she brought me some big old packages of red snapper. And we're gonna invite the family over today and we're gonna have a fish fry. Our menu today is fried red snapper. And we're gonna use a menu that I have been eating since I was a little girl. And my dad, he had it before me with fish down in the Pensacola Gulf Coast area. Traditionally, we have fried fish and hush puppies and cheese grits. If you've never had them, they're one of my favorite. And baked beans, just you're gonna see a doctored up baked beans here and coleslaw so that is our traditional recipe and we're gonna do hush puppies and french fries for the kids because they love them i'm making a banana pudding for dessert and i'm just getting ready to prep everything and get ready for the fun this afternoon so here we go yeah we got a lot to cook in about three hours so time to get to it let's do it Woo! my mom's gonna be the star of this video because i haven't put on makeup today and y'all seem to like her yay yay i'm excited <laughs> Since we're here, we might as well get going on this one. And my husband is awful fond of gadgets. And you know, he, he decided that he wanted to make boiled eggs on a regular basis. And I tried to show him how to do it on the stove and he just wasn't interested because he's an engineer. So he bought himself this thing called a rapid egg cooker. And actually it works really well. And since I'm getting ready to use my stove up, for some other things, I'm gonna go ahead and use Jamie's rapid egg cooker. So basically I'm pouring enough water in the bottom of the pan that um, steams for hard boiled eggs because it says how much you use. And you basically, you're pricking the bottom of the egg and you put that side up and you just place them in the egg cooker. Get you six really perfect boiled eggs because I do have a bad habit of walking away and forgetting I left boiled eggs on the stove. So I have come back to some hard boiled eggs before. Go ahead and place them in here and turn it on. And when the timer goes off, I'll have six perfect boiled eggs. Okay, getting ready for the fish fry with our traditional family baked beans. And and y'all, I just have to tell you, I recently saw a recipe for homemade baked beans. I had it, they were delicious. One of these days I'll need to find it and let Catherine just post it. Um, we had it at a party a couple weeks ago. But this is how we've cooked them in my family since I was a little girl. And you know, sometimes you just want to follow tradition and there's those flavors that bring you back to home and family. And um, We've been cooking baked beans like this. This is how my mama cooked them. This is how she taught me to do it. And, and this is what we've had at our fish fries forever. So traditionally, it's what we always do. I'm using the bacon grease. So from my picture of cooking bacon yesterday, I'm just putting some of the bacon grease down in the bottom of my pan. So I am gonna heat up the bacon grease and I have two containers of bell peppers and onions already chopped up and ready that I bought at HEB yesterday. I am gonna put these in the pot here in a minute and cook them up to add to the baked beans. Okay, so I'm adding up these chopped bell peppers and onions. Can't wait to smell all these flavors when they cook. I don't know if y'all noticed in my cooking and some other things, but everything just about starts with um, bell peppers, green onions, and sometimes celery. I don't put celery in my beans though. So you see I had that melted bacon grease just a little bit, so it gives that sheen on the bottom. And I'm stirring up my, my bell peppers and onions and gonna let them cook a little bit. And then I'm gonna, in a minute, I'm gonna add a, a, about a teaspoonful of chopped garlic after the onions and peppers cook a bit. All right, so I took out, that's probably about a teaspoon and a half of garlic. My vegetables were almost done cooking. You see they're getting a little bit translucent and garlic doesn't take near as long. So I'm adding the garlic last. And let that cook for about a minute and grab all the rest of the ingredients to pour in. So the garlic has been cooking and remember I cooked bacon yesterday on a different recipe and um, I saved it up last night in the pot. I put some in Brussels sprouts last night, some of the crispy bacon. My family just kept picking on it and eating it. So I had it in the refrigerator and I'm adding the bacon to the vegetables. I'm gonna let it get all nice and hot, and then I'm gonna add, it, add everything else here in just a moment. All right, so got the bacon and veggies. I'm using some of my Lowry's seasoned pepper to season them up. I'm just gonna spray 
sprinkle some salt in here. Y'all see I'm just kind of sprinkling it over the top. And I'm adding two of these big cans. These are the 55 ounce cans because there's a lot of people coming over here to eat today that love baked beans. So I'm doing this 55 ounce can, two of them, of Bush's Original Baked Beans. So I'm gonna use that. And y'all, this is how my mama makes them, so no judgment, because they are delicious, but we always do like a squeeze of yellow mustard. Remember I said we're making doctored up beans? A squeeze of ketchup and something sweet. I had a, um, sometimes it's brown sugar, sometimes it's maple syrup, just whatever I happen to have. Right now I have 100% pure cane syrup that I picked up over in Louisiana the other day. So I'm pouring in some cane syrup, gives it a little sweet, and stir all that up. And because this is a Dutch oven, just gonna let it all these good flavors cooked together. I'm not gonna heat my oven up today because it's 100 degrees outside. I'm just gonna let this simmer on the stove for the next couple of hours. And y'all, this is gonna be delicious. These are the best baked beans, doctored up baked beans. All right, just put the lid on. I'm gonna let them simmer for the next few hours because nobody's coming over for a while. Hey, Michael, what are you doing? Making sweet tea. For who? Cousin. All right, so Michael is making the sweet tea for the fish fry. Michael, how many tea bags are you gonna use? Three. Three? All right, put them in the coffee pot. Michael loves to make tea, and normally he makes unsweet tea, but today, for the cousins who don't like unsweet tea, they like to have a pot, so he's making it up for us. Now are you gonna close it and let it brew? Are you going to close it and turn it on? Turn it on, please. All right, turn it on and let it brew. The tea has finished brewing, so Michael is going to get the tea ready. How many cups of sugar do you add in there, Michael? One and a half. How many cups, Michael? One and a half. Awesome. Now, y'all, I taught Michael to make tea this way. <laughs> Making it in the coffee pot like this, it is, it just brews it up perfect for southern iced tea. Now he's gonna pour in his brewed tea on top of the sugar. This is an important step when you're making sweet tea is add the sugar to the hot tea and make sure the sugar is dissolved before you add the rest of the water. So Michael's gonna really make sure it's dissolved. Let's slow down a little bit, boo. Now just filling up the rest of the pitcher with water so it's not too strong. And yeah, now it's ready to be served later this afternoon. Good job, Michael. Can I get a thumbs up? Awesome job. So while Michael was cooking his tea, I realized how slow the pot was moving. And I don't know if you clean your pots like this, but um, whenever your dripping starts to slow way down, I put several cups of vinegar in the coffee pot, turn it on, just let it run through. It'll clean out all that buildup gets in there and slows down your your brew just finish it up where i showed y'all how to clean the teapot and uh catherine's probably edited this video because i made the mistake of leaning over the fumes and got a nice big dose of vinegar it made me cough but remember i poured vinegar into the coffee pot i let it run through and clean out all those minerals that get caught up Excuse the dirty sink, because we're in the middle of cleaning right now. So the second thing I'm gonna do is just run a clean container of fresh water through the pot. And I usually do that twice. Just so you don't have vinegar tea. Just so that tea. I don't have vinegar <laughs> tasting tea, but that'll flush it out and make it just a lot easier to, to use next time. All right, so the beans are cooking and we are gonna get on to the next one. I'm making coleslaw. Some of you have seen me make this coleslaw before. And I'm a big fan of green onions. So I bought three bunches of green onions yesterday. And I'm chopping them up. They aren't all going in the coleslaw. But once I get them, I like to have them available. So I'm chopping them up and sticking them in the freezer in some um, freezer bags. And that way I can grab a handful with whatever I'm cooking and if I need green onions. So just gonna mix up this coleslaw. And some of you saw me make this before.
before and I don't think that the recipe was in there. So it's not a real recipe. This is a coleslaw I've been making for years to go with fish. It's, um, it's a different style of coleslaw. It's not sweet and it's apparently very keto friendly for those of you on a keto diet. But I bought three packages. These are three eight ounce packages of shredded cabbage. So I'm putting those in there. I had some purple cabbage that was left over in my refrigerator from a salad. So I chopped that up to put in there. And my sister and my sister-in-law both like this and like to take home leftovers. That's why I'm using three of these eight ounce packages of, of slaw. The next ingredient, so did y'all see me make those eggs earlier in that rapid egg cooker? So now I am just gonna peel those eggs and chop them up. I peel, I boiled six. I'm gonna, I'm gonna peel two of them here. Look how easy they peel too. That's what I decided what sold me on that thing is that they were so easy to peel after I cooked them. So I'm gonna start out with four eggs right now. Um, since I bought that extra bag of coleslaw, I'm gonna have to just look at it and see how it looks and decide if I need to add add more eggs as I go along. Look at these eggs, they just cooked perfect. See, they're absolutely perfect in the middle. Let me cut one in half for you, look at that. Look at that. The egg yolks came out perfect, perfect little hard boiled eggs. She's just kind of roughly chopping them up to throw in the coleslaw. So I chopped up the eggs, so right now it's where it 24 ounces of chopped cabbage and four eggs. And I'm adding, this is um, one stalk of um, green onions chopped up. It's a lot of cabbage in here and eggs, y'all. So I just salted the crap out of this. But it's, again, it's to your taste, however much salt and pepper you like. All right, so I got my ingredients in there, plenty of salt and pepper. I'm using my Hellman's uh, Real Mayonnaise. So there's a couple of really good mayonnaises out there. You just pick your favorite, whichever one happens to be yours, but this is the one that happens to be mine. If I'm making coleslaw. I'm gonna stir up my ingredients in there and I'll be putting this in the refrigerator in a minute, letting all these flavors just mix up together for the next couple hours till it's time to eat the fish. All right, so we are getting ready for our fish fries. <laughs> this is my sister Susan, I'm Lisa, Catherine's mom, Catherine's aunt. And, and jo Uncle Lewis and Aunt Joanna are around here too and they just went and hid. But anyway, so <laughs> now, Catherine brought us a whole bunch of red snapper that is from a snapper trip recently so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fry up the red snapper so susan and i we called our dad bill whitburn captain bill who was the he ran and was the owner and ran the charter boat lisa in pensacola florida for years and years and years and years and years and out uh, captain bill could outfish anybody so we had to call captain bill today and get him to remind us how to cook this fish because it'd been a year and we both forgot so what we use is the zatarans wonderful seafood breading fish fry. Our fish is cut up in bite-sized chunks. We have a wash prepared, and this little trick comes from cousin Justin. Justin, he was a cook at a seafood restaurant over in Louisiana. He said we should always wash our fish, and so it's basically yellow mustard in some water. We've got the batter over here, and what we're getting ready to do is put the batter on the fish and get ready to be fried. You got it. Get that, get an egg, it depends on how big the ball of wash is. Uh -huh. um, get an egg or two in there, whisk it up real good. And you want about a one to three mustard to water ratio. Um, oh. And then you want to put the fish in the wash and then in the batter and then in the grease. You don't, okay, want, to, you don't want to double dip either one. So okay. you go in the wash first and then the batter. All right. Going onward with the fish episode, we stopped in the middle of it, decided it didn't look right, called Justin to say, Justin, what are we doing wrong? Mm -hmm. It is not a double dip, right? No Correct. double dip, Correction. one dip, you take your fish. He also told us to put an egg in our uh, wash. <laughs> so we cracked one egg, put it in the wash with our mustard and our um, water. water. And he said the mustard to water is a one to three ratio is what he said and then only dip it once so that it's a light batter 
and set it over on the parchment to dry a little bit before we put it in the fry. Perfect. So just that looks much better. Yeah. So and and not do it too wet. Wet. Yeah. Let it kind of so kind of drip it off and then toss it around in the breading. Correct. And then throw it on a piece of parchment paper and so it'll be ready to fry. Simple. We just needed the right ingredients. Yep. We got it now. All right, getting ready to cook the final side and I'm making cheese grits. And what we have at a fish fry, I have to go back to what we've had for years and years and years. So I'm yep. making basic quick grits. I'm gonna add some garlic salt to the water and I've got some Velveeta cheese I'm gonna melt in it and it is gonna taste delicious. So how many cups so, of water? Well, I'm using six cups of water because I'm making, how many servings of grits was that? 12. 12, all right. So we're gonna have our cup and a half of grits ready to go. When our water comes to a boil, those are ready to pour in. I've got the cheese I'm gonna pull out. It's gonna be ready, simple and easy and delicious and perfect with our fish. Susan's doing a great job over here, battering up the fish. Dredging and battering. Oh yeah. So, I'm putting like five or six shakes of garlic salt in here. So think about however much salt you need for your, um, for your grits and just replace the salt with garlic salt. So recipe actually calls for a half a teaspoon and six servings. So I put about a teaspoon of salt in my 12 servings, garlic salt. So they're gonna be garlic cheese grits. These are five minute grits. We pull them in when the water starts to boil. So I'm gonna let them cook. At about three minutes, I'm gonna stir them up really good and I'm gonna add the cheese and the cheese will cook in with it in the last couple minutes. So I'm using these Mexican shreds, cheddar, sharp cheddar shreds, Velveeta, because they will melt nicely into my grits and they'll be nice and cheesy. So I decided I need to make them cheesier. So this is eight ounces. So I'm gonna put half of that eight ounces in there. Let's stir that up. Oh, what the heck, we'll just put all of them. So I use 16 ounces of shredded cheese. When you're making it in bulk, sometimes you have to look at it and think about, did I get my proportions right? And those are gonna be cheesy goodness themselves, right there, ready to eat. The fish is all battered and ready to be fried. Dad and my Uncle Lewis are out here working on the, what's this called? The hush puppies right now. You always wanna do the hush puppies and fries before the fish so they don't taste fishy. He has the oil right at around 400 degrees. And they're in there just to cooking. Then you wanna place them on either a paper towel or newspaper lined little tray. And let or the both. excess, yeah, or both. <laughs> and let the excess grease drain off. Awesome. All right, on to the jalapeno hush puppies. Hush puppies are done, and now it's on to the crinkle cut french fries. Once again, into the like 400 degree oil. Ooh, look at that. Excellent fry cook skills, Dad. Hey, gotta have some skills to fall back on. <laughs> If the engineering industry doesn't yeah. work out. Yeah. <laughs> the engineer doesn't quite cut it. Alright. First batch of fries is coming out of the oil. Oh yeah. Those are gonna be good. First batch of fish going in the fryer. You just want to gently set it in there so you don't splash it and, you know, get splashed by 400 degree oil. First batch of fish is out of the fryer. We basically just left it in there until it was a golden brown color, which was maybe four to five minutes. And now the second batch is going in. Everything is coming together and we're just about to eat. So we've got the coleslaw. We've got a couple different pasta salads. 
We've got hush puppies. We've got cheese grits and baked beans. Here's some fish coming in hot off the fryer. In the oven, I think we have french fries and more fish. Y'all, it is time to dig in. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed this fish fry video. I know it was a little bit all over the place, but it was such a fun morning cooking with my mom, hanging out with family, and eating just a home-cooked, delicious southern meal. It was just so, so good. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel down below if you haven't done so. And I will see y'all again real soon with another video. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.